Greetings, friend. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Boulder Valley. We are a spiritual community nestled in this beautiful area right in front of the Front Range and uh, just north of Denver. And we're so glad you joined us. <clears throat> Our theme for the month of August is one of my most favorite things in all the world to talk about. If I could just talk about this and Okay, well, oneness and gratitude. Okay, there's a lot I'd I'd like to talk about. But this one, hmm, this one, it takes such courage to face this head on. And that is the quality of God that we call courage. Courage. Lao Tzu once wrote, a man, today he would say a person, um, without outward courage dares to die. A person with inner courage dares to live. And boy, does it take courage. Does it ever take courage to be who we really are? E.E. E. Cummings once wrote, it takes courage to grow up and be who you really are. And I have so come to believe that. I have so come to believe that the spiritual path, when we really dive into our spiritual nature, it takes tremendous courage because then we are asked to be authentic. So other words that can be used for courage are, are words like bravery, valor, and it literally means the choice or willingness, listen to this, it embraces all the different parts of courage and the different ways that it shows up. Choice, excuse me, courage is a choice and willingness to confront agony, pain, danger, uncertainty, or intimidation. There are four bodies that we feed every single day. Let's look at each one and talk about how courage shows up. There's the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. Physical courage is something that we inherited really from our, um, from our ancestors who used to live in caves. For the most part, although today people could argue that, oh my God, just walking to a grocery store can be dangerous. Maybe, maybe not. In general, yes, there are uh, different things that are happening. But in general, we actually all live much safer than our uh, prehistoric brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, <laughs> the souls that all of us, some of us lived in those days. But the physical courage is facing danger, even in the face of death. Even in the face of death. Mental courage is the ability to act on one's own beliefs and boldness. Is to act on our own beliefs, even in the face of public criticism and discrimination. One of the things I've said to people over the years as they say, oh, gosh, I, I, I have this destiny. I really need to go do this. And I don't know how it's going to unfold. And my parents are going to think I'm nuts. And my family and my friends and my community, everyone's going to talk. And I go, you are absolutely right. They are. They are. You are going to be the headline bolded and exclamation mark for about, I don't know, 12 minutes. And then people get on with their lives. But it takes such courage to say, I'm going to do this. It doesn't make sense, but I'm going to do it anyway. But I'm going to do it anyway. Emotional courage. So the, emo the opposite of emotional courage is fear. Now, stay with me. Don't leave. Let me finish before I say this, but I'm going to make a bold statement right now. I think emotional courage, excuse me, emotional fear is a scam. It is a scam. Unless we are walking across the street in a Bluetooth 
tiger is beginning to chase us or a Mack truck is coming right at us. Most of the fear that we experience is a scam. Often, it is a transgenerational belief that is passed down from generation to generation. And it creates great insecurities that can lead to addictions and compulsions. I've seen this over and over and over again. And for this one, I'm not talking theory. I know this one. Having dealt with such deep insecurities, I thank God I found science of mind literally and began my journey of awakening because I would have gone down a path of destruction. It can absolutely stop our awakening process. Fear can stop us like that. We're moving along. We're, we're, we're doing everything we can. We're, we're just feeling good. And boom, there it is. Fear. And I will tell you that in today's world, marketing people, politicians, people who have influence over others learn how to hypnotize people into fear. It's fascinating for me to watch. So it can stop our awakening process for now, eventually, at some point, because I do believe life is eternal. And at some point on our eternal flow of life, we're going to wake up and take, and take fear on as a challenge from the place of our deep courage. But it can often lead people to, at the end, when they're taking their last few breaths, they will regret their lives. It's like, I wish I'd had more courage to be myself, to go do the things I wanted to do. I wish I didn't let courage, hold, uh, fear hold me back. For mental and emotional fear, a person has to begin to move out of victim mentality and explore their lives. In order to have mental and emotional courage, you and I have to believe and know because it's true that we have choice in life. I want to show you a very makeshift <laughs> description of courage. So here we have a circle that says comfort zone. And here we have where the magic happens. Brene Brown once said, you can choose comfort or you can choose courage, but you can't choose both. You can choose comfort or you can choose courage, but you can't choose both. And courage often requires that you step out without knowing how any of it's going to unfold. You don't get to know. I don't get to know. We just get to know what we want. It takes such courage to stop and say, this is what I'm going for. Spiritual courage, which is the one that, of course, I am most fascinated with. When E.E. E. Cummings wrote, it takes such courage to grow up and be who you really are. He really meant that. Because to be who you really are requires that you're willing, courageously, bravely, valoringly, I don't think that's a word, but it's going to work here, that you fully step out and say, this is who I am. No apologies, no, no nothing, but this is who I am. Now, we got to be careful not to move into arrogance that can block the sunshine of God. But when we say, this is who I am, there's actually a sense of quiet detachment, but fully participating energy that we show up with. We've all been around people who do that. The way that we develop spiritual courage is to develop a deep, deep relationship with the divine. It is what I am most grateful for. 
When I started ministerial school in 1983, I was 33 years old. And I knew that if I told anyone in my family or circle of friends that I, people I had grown up with, that I was entering ministerial school, there would be talk about institutionalizing me. And actually there was, because where I was going was so different from where I had come from. But I couldn't stop. I wanted to experience the divine like none other. I was passionate about it. So the first year of ministerial school, people would say, oh, I heard you went back to college. I'm like, yeah, I did, I did. What do you, what's your major? Um, communications. And then in the second year, I just said, I can't do this anymore. I had grown enough in my own authentic self to courageously say, I am in the school of ministry at the, at the Seattle campus for the Church of Religious Science. And in those days, it was like, oh my God, you're weird. I go, I know, I love being weird. but And some people said, I, I can't be around you. I said, that's okay. That's okay. Sad but that's okay. And that happens. Sometimes we have to say goodbye to people we love. Doesn't mean we stop loving them. Doesn't mean they don't remain in our hearts. But when you fully embrace your authentic nature, you are embracing your divinity. And it takes such courage to do that. So I applaud all of you as you say yes. How do you do that? You develop your relationship with the divine. There, we have so many um, uh, strategies and tools and classes to help you go deeper in awakening to the truth of who you are and the source of your very being. Prayer, meditation, visualizing, being in community. There are so many things that you can do. And the one thing I want you to know about this, as you courageously awaken to who you really are, you don't have to do it alone. In fact, our tagline here at the Center for Spiritual Living Boulder Valley, I love this, is love lives here. So thank you so much for joining me today at Mystic Moments. Um, your homework for the week is notice where you're holding back out of fear and notice what you might be saying at yourself to yourself as you journey down to the last moment you take your last breath because you know what, we're all gonna do that. What would you most regret? What would you most regret in your life if you let fear stop you if you stayed in your comfort zone and didn't jump over courageously into where the magic happens. Just notice this week. So please donate to us, go to our website, um, join me every, every week with Mystic Moments. Uh, it's one of my most favorite things I get to do in the ministry. And know that I love you. You're not alone. Have a happy, courageous week.